Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Now Dive TV. Um, little different setting than you're used to. I'm at home, just put the kids to bed. We had a nice dinner, I'm now sitting in the garden, drinking a glass of wine, enjoying the first early summer, like warmish evening. So you can say I'm in my comfort zone right now, you know? It doesn't get more relaxed than this. And that's what I would like to talk to you about now. Uh, comfort zone within diving. The reason I made this, uh, making this video is because I get it's a, sort of the same question a lot of times. And um, it's not exactly word for word the same question, but the, the gist of it is the same. And and it, it, and it comes with a relation to your comfort zone when you're diving. Now, when we're diving, we are out of our comfort zone. Um, we're at least not as relaxed as we are sitting in the garden drinking a glass of wine. Um, the thing is, we need to train to expand our comfort zone, our relative comfort zone underwater to be able to dive safely. And this takes a lot of time, a lot more time than you'd think, because in diving we are not so focused on you know what can go wrong now we are in the beginning but then when we get a little bit of experience you know we've done this a hundred times two hundred times five hundred times a thousand times nothing ever went wrong so you start relaxing a little bit and you think you're expanding your comfort zone but you're not you're just lucky basically that's what it is right and you can test yourself if you're in your comfort zone. I've said this before in other video blogs, um, and it's something I like to use every once in a while, is what I call the wet notes test. You take out your wet notes and you write a smiley. If you, at whatever stage in your dive, feel comfortable to do that, to stop whatever you're doing, take out your wet notes out of your pocket, write a smiley and put it back in. If you're, whatever part in your dive can do that, you're in your comfort zone because you're you have the ability to stop up and you know relax and have a have a nice um, like overview situational awareness as we like to call it so what are signs that you're not in your comfort zone if you feel troubled to look at your SVG something as simple as that if you feel troubled to really like make sure everything is correct positioned on you if your long hose hasn't written out of the you know out of your strap or underneath your canister if it's not like making a big halo feel for that if you don't feel like any sort of excess amount of energy you can spend with that you're outside of your comfort zone now a lot of people ask me stuff, like I said when I started this video, is relating to the comfort zone. And it is because it's very difficult to spot those small, subtle changes. If, um, if we're not able to stop during a descent, look up to check if my body is okay really look if your body is okay not just acknowledge there is a black you know guy in diving equipment or girly diving equipment up above you no 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 that's not checking if they're okay checking if they're okay is looking at them in the eye acknowledging and seeing observing there is calmness behind those eyes and that takes more effort than just glancing up yep there's a diver we continue if you don't feel comfortable to really stop, turn up, you know, accepting the tanks will probably want to pull you over, adjusting for that extra weight back again, get into balance, don't lose sight of the anchor line and continue your descent, equalizing, equalizing your suit, keeping hold of your instruments and all that sort of stuff will really task loaded. So slow down your ascent if you think that's too task loaded. Now, in this case, the question related to a body line. 
it's uh, it's it's a common practice. Um, well, it used to be more more common. It's not so much anymore, but it's still used, and it's basically a line between two divers. Now, it's a bit of a Pandora's box, this issue or this subject. So, I hope I'm not treading over anyone's toes. And if I do, I'm sorry. It's no, um, no, it's not my intention to insult you anyway. But I really think if you need to dive with a body line, you're diving over your comfort zone. You're diving outside of your capacities. Let me explain why. If we're, imagine we're in a, a room which is completely blacked out and I'm holding you by the jacket like this. I can't see you because it's blacked out and we can't talk. Will I be able to discern if you're okay or not? Or if you're nervous and you hear this creepy sound in this dark room and something scratching in the corner. How can I know if you're all right if I hold you by the jacket or by the, you know, whatever piece of cloth? I can't. Well, if, if you're really shaky, I might be able to feel it. But otherwise I can't. If I hold you in the hands, I can notice that you're squeezing my hand or you're shaking or you're getting sweaty palms. Then I can tell, hey, there's something up, you know, he's not comfortable here. I need to address this. Now take that away. Let's say put a line in between us. We hold on to a line and, and you hold on to a line. We're in the same room and we're walking around. I can just feel you're there. I have no idea if you are there, if you know what I mean. Are you there or are you just present? It takes more effort to stop, turn, get your buddy's attention with a light, wait for him to acknowledge your signal, wait for him to look at you, and then discern, hey, is this person okay or not? It takes more effort. It takes more control. It's much easier to just yank on that, that line and say, boink, boink, yep, there's someone there. There's someone present, but are they present? You need those people to be present here. You need those people to be aware if they need to help you with something, right? Ah, but it's in dark conditions or murky waters where it's poor visibility. Well, you got a light. Yeah, but if it's sometimes the light makes it even worse and you know, you can't see anything because you're bl you're whiting everything out. All right, I've, I've dived in some pretty murky conditions. And, and you know what? If the conditions were so bad, we'd either make physical contact, like really physical contact with an arm, or we just abort the dive. Listen, there's no, if you can't see your buddy who's like an arm's length away from you, you can't see the dive. Then what's the point of the dive, right? It's just making bubbles? Get out of the water, do something else. So. Again, it sounds very harsh to say if you're diving with a body line, you're diving over your skill level, but it's true when you think about it. And it takes a lot of like self like uh, realization to accept this, but try to start practicing with using lights. And if you feel that you have the need to dive with a body line because it's dark, the visibility is okay, but it's dark, practice where it's not dark. Practice on a site where it's, it's a sandy beach or a light beach, shallow depth, practice there. Practice body positioning, team positioning, uh, communication underwater, uh, practice with your light. Um, and if you're comfortable there, do it at the same dive site, but in dusk, like about now. If you go in the water now, the sun is about setting, it's darker. And then if you're comfortable with that, do it at night, same dive site. Train your awareness, train to be aware of your light movements. You can see by the light that moves in front of you if your body is all right. If it's a very erratic Luke Skywalker kind of like signs, there's something up. <laughs> Dude, are you okay? No, the signals we're aware, right? The signals we know. A circle is okay. Are you okay? Yes, I am okay. Up and down signal is, hey, I want your attention. Look, a big shark. Or, hey, I want your attention. Look, there's an octopus changing color, whatever. Fast flashing back and forth as a, from side to side like this is danger, out of air or whatever danger. So in any case, 
I want attention. Whereas the up and down signal and then pointing to something can be, hey, look at that, right? A small motion over the bottom means I want to move in that direction. So you go from one point out and back to that one point out again. So there's very simple and intuitive light signals we could use. Practice that instead of diving with a line. If we're diving with a line, it provokes to just accept the buddy is all right because he's on that line. Dying, dying. Don't accept everyone's all right. Look at them and really look at them. I see so, so many divers just glancing. Oh, yep, there's a diver. There's acknowledging there's a diver. That's the only thing they see. If the diver has eyes like this and breathing that's, you know, like a freight train, I haven't observed it. Observe a diver. Look at the diver. Like, find mistakes on the diver. Fix them. You know, the hose is there. I don't know. Uh, a backup light is turned on. Um, there's a double end or a wet note hanging from the pocket. Observe divers. Right? Um, the mask is flipped up. Sometimes the mask is hovering just above the heads. And as soon as you exhale out your nose, your mask falls away. Observe those things. Because it'll help you in the long run, right? If your buddy loses his mask because of something you overlooked, <laughs> comes back to bite you in your bind because, yeah, he's now having a problem with finding a mask or on the bottom or gone or whatever, right? So, with regards to buddy lines, I really don't see the point in them. There's no argument, as I've heard, and I've been doing this for a while I've never heard someone come to me with an argument uh, that that gives me a benefit of using a buddy light underwater I, I, I don't know you know buddy separation is, is not not an argument strong enough because you should practice that you don't get rid of your don't lose your buddy and then gradually make the dive more um, more complicated or more challenging if you need a line to stay with your buddy, you're over your limit. Um, yeah, but then the current, you know, the current is no problem. If you're in the same current, you're at the same depth, you're moving at the same rate in the same direction. I yet have to dive a place where the current for you is going that way and for me is going this way when we're looking at each other. It doesn't exist. So descend at the same time, practicing your descent skills as a team, not I'll see you at the bottom. Bye. All right. Practice your descent skills. And again, the lights. The lights are a much better way of communication than a body line. And that's just with diving two. Now let's look at the team of three. We prefer diving in a team of three because if one in the team of three has an issue, the other one can help him with that issue, and we have one completely un influence the diver that now can take the leader role he can hold on to the line or you know in a cave situation he can hold on to a reference point communicate with the guy who's helping and now take over the line the the captain's role uh, making so you have one person with a completely clear head that can use that you can use as a as a team leader whereas if you're diving with a team of two and one has a problem the other one has half of a problem because he's helping usually um, so in a team of three using a buddy line is a complete disaster he, he, what are you going to do having two lines from one guy one to the end one side and one to the other side come on you know that's like having two steering wheels in a in a car you know and your wife has the one and you have the other Jesus Christ can you imagine so you know since we're having this little casual talk about comfort zone and and this is why the question pops up every time without people realizing it's actually what they want is to be more comfortable underwater is to train yourself in the things you know you find challenging and this is hard because it's like facing your demons right um, but train that and make it fun I mean find something that's a little bit challenging with the body Everyone has the same thing, and and, and just go out and, and, and train that in in, an, in a way that it's it's fun. In diving, it's very simple. It's getting comfortable with your way home. 
right? In cave diving or wreck diving is something called progressive penetration, where you go in a little bit, map it, come back out. Go in a little bit further, map it, come back out. Come in a little bit further. You're getting comfortable with your way home. And if the way home is outside of the cave or up a line, that doesn't matter. Getting comfortable with your way home, that's the important part. Um, a technical dive is very easy. But slap a bunch of bottles on you, you, just go down to the depths and come back up and switch whatever your computer tells you, right? It's easy. It's like driving fast on a motorway. Is it hard to drive 300 kilometers an hour? No, it's not. You're going straight in a straight line. As long as you don't, you know, turn away from the, from the road, you, you're fine, you know? You're going in a straight line right? until something goes wrong. So are we comfortable with our way home? So we have all these procedures and protocols in place to cope with failures. <laughs> Um, not for the likelihood if they'll, if they'll happen, but for the consequence of when they happen. But I'll do a video on that in the near future very shortly. Um, so we'll come back to that. So coming back to the first start of this video is your comfort zone. Train yourself to be able to perform more tasks than just survival underwater. Um, if you're going down to dive on a wreck, especially here in the northern European countries where usually when you look down you can see the anchor line disappearing, um, even if it's a relative shallow wreck at about 30 meters. You see the anchor line disappearing, halfway down the anchor line you cannot see the bottom and you cannot see the boat anymore, you just see anchor line. And I, actually that's the part of the dive I like. Um, but practice that on the descent you use the anchor line only as a guide to not let you float backwards if there is a current. If there's no current, see if you can descend with just a visual reference on that anchor line. Practice going down steadily and controlled well, in a controlled manner until you reach the wreck. Because that way you can see the light bulb or the light beam of your body just beside you. And yours is here. You can turn around, have a look. Are we okay? Yes, are we okay? So believe me, it's on the surface, and all of you experienced divers out there, it's on the surface and on the way down, the most issues arise, right? It's equalization problems, forgotten inflators, uh, mask that's leaking, all that sort of mumbo jumbo. So stay close to your body on the surface and on the way down, on the water, it's easy, you know? Driving fast on the motorway. It's the parking that screws things up. <laughs> Alright, so without further ado, I'm gonna enjoy the last you know, a couple of sun rays here behind me in the garden. I'm not been rambling about. I'm already rambling for 21 minutes, so I'm gonna wrap it up. A um, little bit of more casual video blog than you're used to, maybe. But um, I hope you find it a bit, you know, cozy. Have a little chat like this. I, I'd, I'd like to, for those guys that are sitting there for. 21 minutes now and and you know shaking their heads and saying forget it this guy is full of shit I dive with my buddy line for 30 years and it's always been nice it's always been good please be the one that gives me the argument and I say I bow myself and say yes that's a valid argument for diving with a buddy line so far I haven't heard it and I've heard plenty but try me as a be my guest. I'm not too big to say, well, that's a valid argument. And I'll see if I think there's one I've heard before and it's it's one that doesn't hold any water, <laughs> pun intended. Um, I'll, I'll comment my thoughts on it, um, either with another video as a reply or just a reply in the comments. And let's make this a, a fun and um, like um, keep it civil uh, uh, discussion. Because, I mean, there's a, there's a whole lot of divers out there diving with these buddy lines and and you know good divers you know, aware people who maybe do it out of habit uh, but maybe not need don't need to anymore so anyway have a good evening out there and uh, catch you on the next side